Hey everybody, this video is going to analyze the problems of four different players' forehand topspin loops, and their ratings range from 12 to 1800. So these are diverse players with diverse problems. I will first identify the problem with their loop, offer a solution, show how their loops improved after the solution, and provide some drills that they can do to improve their loops more in the future. Hazel has two primary issues with his forehand loop. He has disjoint acceleration and too little of weight transfer. Disjoint acceleration means that your body is accelerating at a different rate than your arm. As you can see in the video, Hazel's arm is usually still moving when his body is finished turning. So this causes a disjoint acceleration and its inefficiency in stroke time and recovery. Hazel's second problem is weight transfer. Weight transfer needs to happen at the exact same moment that you are accelerating on the ball. As you can see in the freeze frame, Hazel starts on his right foot, but the ball has left his paddle before his weight has gone onto his left foot, meaning his weight transfer is inefficient and it's effectively doing nothing to the ball. His loop is pretty much all coming from the arm, even though he seems to be transferring his weight. Another issue with Hazel's weight transfer is that he's not shifting his weight to his left foot. He's going from mostly weight on right foot to about 50-50, whereas it should go from mostly right foot to mostly left foot. So in order to fix Hazel's forehand, we need to make his stroke more compact, and we also need to make his timing more precise. His forehands were too loose, and his weight transfer was not on time, so we need to combine those two things into a short window when he's striking the ball. And that is going to cause his loop to improve a lot, as you can see in the following video. To improve your looping efficiency even more, you can have the blocker do a speed block. This is an active shot that forces the attacker to maintain short, compact strokes as well as good timing of acceleration. You can always make your strokes bigger later on for more power, but it's good to start with a short efficient stroke so that you don't have unnecessary backswings and you can make your timing very precise. Harrison has two issues as well. His issues are looping with his shoulder too much and not relaxing enough on the recovery. As you can see, he is using his shoulder to generate all the power in his loop. His right arm is generating all the acceleration, which means that he's too tense during the stroke and during recovery. The reason that we can't use the shoulder is because it's not as stable as using our whole body. Instead, we should generate the power from our right side with our obliques, our right butt, and our right leg and hip, and transfer it over onto the left foot, which is what we were talking about with Hazel. Okay, so for Harrison, his entire stroke was too tense because his shoulder was coming up every time he was doing the shot. And it was coming up during the shot and after the recovery, it wasn't able to relax again. So he would hit the edge of his paddle or completely miss the ball quite often. If that happens to you, you might have a similar problem to Harrison because you're using the wrong muscle groups. You need to be using your body synchronously to produce uh, a accelerated ball. Harrison really struggles with change of pace balls because if you give him a slower one, his shoulder cannot adjust fast enough, whereas your body can get into position and continue to drive through the ball um, way more accurately than you could just do with one muscle. So here is Harrison after we practiced for about 30 minutes, and you can already see the improvement.
A good drill to practice if you have the similar problem to Harrison of not being able to loop awkward balls is to have the blocker block really slow and take off all of the speed on the loop and then you need to also loop it slow and consistently and later on you can add power once you feel more comfortable. John Lau has two issues as well. So his center of mass is not in the right place and he's not rotating through the ball. These two problems are somewhat related. So his center of mass is pretty high and it's kind of like near his chest if you would imagine where the center of mass would be. He's playing like the leaning tower of Pisa where the center of mass is not stable and you never know when it's gonna fall down. This makes his rotation into the ball a lot weaker as well. Notice how John is only doing a half rotation with his hips, hardly turning at all. He's also hitting with a pretty narrow stance, which makes his center of mass relatively shaky. We practiced for about 10 minutes on having a wider stance and rotating into the ball with our hips and onto our left foot. So John's second problem of not finishing the stroke and not rotating into the ball enough kind of stemmed from the first problem of not having a wide set stance um, where his center of gravity was right in front of his stomach where it should be for all players. That doesn't matter who you are, it needs to be there so that you can rotate your body weight back to front as well as left to right using your center of mass to move along with your arm moving into the ball. This concept of center of mass is so important. I've said it like 50 times already that there's a Chinese vocabulary word that every coach always talks about called zhong xin, which just means center of heart, I guess. I guess it's not a good direct translation, but yeah, it's really important. Every professional has really good control of their center of mass. And it actually doesn't matter how low you're standing or how tall you're standing, it only matters whether you can control your center of mass to be where you want it and be there to hit every single ball. The most common mistake is to stand with your weight at your butt and you almost fall down. The other mistake is to stand with your weight too far forward and you face plant. So you want to play from a position between these two to where your weight is in front of your stomach, almost like you're a pregnant woman and the baby is where your center of mass should be. You should feel stable and comfortable to play every shot from here. Many table tennis legends like Samsonov and even Waldner don't stand with their butt glued to the ground as a lot of amateurs would like to think when we say get low. All they do is keep their center of mass right in front of them to where their recovery time is very fast and they can play quality into every ball. So we'll see how fixing John's center of mass helped him rotate and finish his shot better on his forehand loop in the following clip. A drill to make sure that your center of mass is in the right position and you follow through your stroke is to have the blocker do a spinny block or a mini countertop spin so that if you're not recovering properly you won't adjust to the small changes in every countertop spin. If you are not able to keep up with this drill it means your backswing is probably too tense and you need to relax until you hit the ball. We're going to be covering the most common mistakes that intermediate to advanced players make while executing the stroke. So here's a little bit about me. So my name is Sartha Gupta. I've been playing table tennis for just over four years now, and my USATT rating is around 1900. And I practice at the Austin Table Tennis Club, which is where this video was filmed. So 
the first thing I want you to notice is the point where I'm contacting the button. So, if you take a close look, as you can see in the slow mo, my racket angle is tilted really downward, which means that my ball is always hitting either the top, the left, or the right edge of my paddle. And what that does is, after a couple of balls, I'm not able to return the ball back to the table, and it, it either goes into the net or it goes outside. The second thing I'm going to talk about is center of mass, which is basically your body weight. So as you can see, first of all, my legs are completely static unless they really need to move, and my body weight is shifted really backwards. So even though your body angle needs to be forward, if you take a close look at what's happening here, it's really far backwards for me, and immediately when it goes backwards, I miss the ball. And what both of those things lead to is a lack of consistency and quality in my stroke. So hopefully at this point you have a pretty clear understanding of what the problems are. So now let's try to fix those problems and find solutions. So the first thing you need to do is always let your wrist be loose when you're contacting the ball. So your wrist shouldn't be tight like this or like this. It should be loose and there should be freedom of movement in your wrist. And what that does is it enables your right angle to be a lot straighter and it allows for flexibility based on the type of situation you're in. So if you're trying to curve the ball, you can angle it down. And if you're trying to like hit down the line, you can angle it straighter. And and because of that, you're going to be able to constantly hit the ball in the center of your racket and not towards the sides because you're adjusting every time you hit the ball. And the second thing is, you should always be on your toes, bend your knees, and angle your body forward. So those things like might seem like three distinct things, but the main idea is that all of them are connected. So if you're on your toes, you'll, you'll automatically bend your knees and you'll angle your body forward. And that applies for all three things. And what that does is it ensures that your the center of mass is always forward and you're not leaning too far back. So you're able to constantly hit the ball with the same motion and you're able to get more balls back on the table. And therefore, the result is more consistency, power, and spin in your stroke. Let's take a look at how to execute all of the ideas that we just discussed on the table. So, what I want you to notice in the slow-mo is my racket angle and my body weight. So, as you can see, my racket angle is completely straight and it has room for flexibility because my wrist is pretty loose. So, what that does is I can hit the sweet spot of my racket a lot more often as you may be able to hear from the sound of the ball contacting my racket. And because my center of mass is forward, I'm missing the ball a lot less and it's, my ball has a lot more power and spin and consistency which is which you can see in this freeze frame so now let's take a look at a drill you can do so this drill is called fast blocking, which is basically alternating between slowly blocking and blocking really fast. So as you can see in this freeze frame, Brian is transferring his weight from his right leg to his left leg, his center of mass is forward, and his racket angle is perfectly straight. So what, what that does is it enables him to generate so much power and spin that I can't return the ball. And this is me doing the same thing. So to wrap up this video, I'm going to summarize all of the talking points that we had today. So first, with Hazel, you need to make sure, if, if you're like him, not to have disjoint acceleration where you're accelerating your body parts at different times, but rather that you should accelerate your legs, your hips, your waist, and your arm all together. And then also, 
you need to rotate your body weight completely onto the left foot. So transfer the weight from back foot to front foot. That's important. And you don't just transfer your weight halfway, you need to complete the motion. And then with Harrison, we could talk about the shoulder and arm loop. So a lot of beginners try to force the motion with their arm and then their backswing is too tense. So to fix that, we need to make sure that we are relaxed up until we hit the ball. And then once we strike, we have a moment of tense and acceleration. And then we have to relax immediately as we finish here, relax and get back to position for the next ball. Um, that will make sure that your timing is more accurate and you can create more impulse onto the ball. Then thirdly, with John Lau, we talked about body rotation and you can't just do a half swing and rotate in this you know, baby motion, but you need to complete it, have a full uh, swing. And that's actually gonna make your recovery faster as well because once you finish onto your left foot, you can push back off and it's gonna be pretty fast. Another thing that we talked about with John was the stance. So John's stance was too narrow and that made his center of mass too high up and unstable because it wobbled back and forth. You need to make sure that your weight is close to your stomach and you're not sitting down too far and you're not uh, falling forward too much either. So it needs to be somewhere in the middle to where you can move your weight into every shot. And lastly, with Sarthak, we talked about the center of mass being too far back for him. And instead, he should make sure it's in front, but not too far in front. And then he also had to hit the ball in a sweet spot so that his paddle angle wasn't uh, too far down or too far out. It needs to be um, closer to his body, and he's, he needs to instantaneously strike the ball which is going to make his ball have more top spin rather than side spin, which translates into more power. Also, you need to make sure that your feet are mobile, which is part of the center of mass. If your center of mass is close to your butt, you're not gonna be able to move around as swiftly. So make sure your center of mass is in front so you can get from point A to point B a lot faster. I hope that that was a useful video. If you wanna see something more like this, um, tell me in the comments and Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.